Okay, so I'm going to just do a real quick look. I'm at the, if you do a Google search for Bazfuss, that's B-A-Z-Z-F-U-S-S. This is the Home Wrecker webpage, and it has a really nice look. I'm not going to go through this in tremendous detail because you certainly may in your own time, but this is the schematic that I'm going to be starting with. This is his Bazfuss V3. And uh, if you've never really been acquainted with schematics before, this is a great time to learn. Just going to do a real quick look at the schematic. So first we've got the input here. This is going to be the input jack. It looks something like this. Input jacks, uh, this is a mono jack, meaning it just has two inputs. Sometimes pedal yules will use a stereo jack on the input, um, but we're, you know, this is really just talking about mono. So we've got our ground connection here. That's going to go right here. And the ground, uh, I think this actually does maybe have a stereo because you've got this, the ground here. Basically what happens is if you plug a cable into the input and you have a stereo jack that is set up like this, then the pedal won't actually turn on and start powering until the, the cable is actually plugged in. Um, but then this, the audio signal is coming in here. It's going to go through an input capacitor and then it's going to go into our transistor right here. The transistor has three connections, a collector, a base, and an emitter. As I understand, the voltage is applied here to the top at the collector. The base has the input of the signal, and then the collector is down here to ground. Now, I guess I'm just applying what I know about tubes. This is basically the exact same function as a tube, um, where you've got the, the, the anode at the top with the voltage and the cathode at the bottom. And then you've got this middle point where the signal is interjected and it is going to flow up towards this input of voltage and that's going to cause amplification. I'm assuming that's the same thing that works in transistor, but honestly I have no idea how those devices work. So uh, if you know anything about transistors, I would really love your input. But I would, I would believe that the, the voltage that is applied here at the top at the anode, or the, I believe the collector, uh, is going to be pretty important. And then down here at the ground, you can see we're just straight grounding this, but I know in other circuits you can put some resistance in there that's going to impede the flow that could kind of work as a gain control. It's, you know, that would kind of slow the flow of current from the anode to the cathode to ground a little bit. Now this circuit is a little unique in that you have this little guy right here. This is where a diode is going to come into play. And this is going to create a feedback loop right, because the signal is coming in here, passing through the transistor, and it wants to keep going this way, but it has a path to come back around and basically rejoin on itself. However, it's a diode, and a diode is kind of unique in that it only allows half of the waveform to pass, and it depends on the direction of the diode, right, you can see the line is here, and the arrow is pointing this way, so that means um, only half of the signal, right, a, a sine wave is doing this, and you, you've got this middle point, so you've got positive, negative, positive, negative, and a diode means that only half the signal, so either all of the positives or all of the negatives are going to pass backwards. So I, as I understand it in this circuit, that's how the clipping is created, right? So you, you only are sending half of the signals through this feedback loop, and that's going to create that clipping fuzz you know, distortion effect. Now we've got this resistor up here, it's listed as 10K, that, and that's going up to this, this is our voltage source, whether you're using a battery or a 9 volt power adapter, it'll be 9 volts of direct current that's coming in to the circuit there. We've got an output capacitor for again some more filtering. Now this capacitor will also help um, I think, I think it provides some coupling so that, because, you know, this is kind of odd. We have the, the, um, the signal coming in from the guitar, which is an AC, or alternating current signal, again, doing this up and down effect, whereas the voltage source is a DC source, a direct current, and the capacitor helps to make sure that the DC does not go this way, that the, this direct current voltage only goes into the transistor to power it, but then that AC current you know, it's going to come out of this collector and it's going to see, oh, there's 10K of resistance here. I don't want to go that way. So I'm going to go this way and, and continue on my merry way out to the output. Um, and there's really nowhere to go for the AC signal to go over here other than to ground. So 
Um, then we finally we've got a potentiometer here, 100k audio. That's just our volume control set on the output, which would basically just allow you to take it from full bore maximum volume down to zero or anywhere in between. And then we've got our output um, output jack, just like that. So that's the circuit on the schematic. Extremely simple. Uh, but one of the things that's kind of exciting about it is we can get a easy understanding. If you're new to pedals or circuits, this can hopefully be a uh, easy starting point for all of us to try to get involved and, and try to figure things out. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the breadboard.